we're going to do is we are going to titrate Tums. In fact, the whole purpose of lab 13, which by the way will be a formal lab, that's why you should be taking notes, okay? This is an antacid. And antacids are things that we take as humans to help us do what? Neutralize the extra acids that we could be producing in our stomach. Whether it's acid reflux, where our stomach, and my stomach is about right here, okay? Where I think most likely my stomach's more like right here, okay? But uh, acid reflux, we could shoot up acid through a sphincter into our esophagus and we get pain here. And it's called heartburn because it's, well, the esophagus runs right behind the heart, so it's, it feels like it's in our heart, okay? But there's all different reasons why we overproduce some of the acids. We have something called parietal cells in our stomachs that produce the acid. And we produce hydrochloric acid, believe it or not, in our stomachs. And what does that hydrochloric acid do? It produces a, a by the way, the pH, I believe, is like 1.2 in your stomach. So that's pretty, pretty acidic. And we produce, of course, a conjugate base that really is really a spectator. And we produce a high concentration of protons. And what do protons do? Well, protons are really small in plus one. They're heat sinking missiles that go after what? Bonds between organic, or let's say covalent bonds between the small atoms. So they rip electrons away. And they break bonds down. Hello, what do you think is happening in your stomach? There's mechanical digestion and there's chemical digestion. This acid is here to break down covalent bonds, okay? Now you say, well, what, what happens in our, why don't we break and have holes in our stomach? Why don't we just kind of dissolve ourselves since we're made of covalent bonds, organic bonds? Well, we produce mucus. And that mucus produces something called bicarbions, HCO3 negative. And what that does, is absorb the H pluses, makes H2CO3, and that becomes CO2 and water. Okay, so we actually have a basic ion in our mucus, a thick, thick gel that coats our lining. But sometimes we don't produce the mucus for different reasons. Sometimes we can have an infection. Um, we're finding out that ulcers, where you have a perforation of your stomach, is due to a weakening of the lining or sometimes a parasite, less to do with stress. But there are issues where people are relieved by adding more of a base than necessary. This is usually enough. This is a base accepting what? Accepting that proton, right? It's a Bronson-Lowry base, okay? And sometimes we just don't have enough of it for whatever reason, okay? So um, people take this antacid. Now it's funny to me. I, I say funny because, well, I look at labels. I, I know we talked about this last time. And you say, oh, it's calcium rich. And we can kill two birds with one stone. Not only can we, what, neutralize the hydrochloric acid that are extra in our stomach for whatever reason, we can also get the calcium in our diet. All right? So, and it says extra 750. Whoa! That's huge, that's strong, okay? And 750 means what? I don't know, it's a big number, okay? If I gave you that many amount of dollars or uh, that just sounds like 750 times the strength of what? <laughs> that's, that's kind of crazy. So you flip it over, okay? You flip it over and what do you see? Well, you flip it over and you see an active ingredient. And that active ingredient, can everyone see what that is? You can read it up here. It says calcium carbonate. Calcium is plus two. Carbonate is CO3 negative two, so the chemical formula is CaCO3. Otherwise called chalk. <laughs> All right, chalk. By the way, this was a precipitate that we made in one of our labs. It's chalk. All right, but it's also a weak base. Why? Well, it's because it's made of a precipitate, you have calcium plus two ions, attracting carbonate ions, ionically. And the beat goes on, CO3 negative two. And the reason why it's a precipitate, if you remember, these charges are really high. Negative two and a plus two colomically stick together better than a negative one and a plus one. So because of Coulomb's law, this is a precipitate. It doesn't dissolve. 
And that's great because we put it in our mouths. It's not going to dissolve in our water environment, okay? And therefore, it's not going to react with our esophagus and pull, okay, or, and act as a strong base, okay, in our esophagus and hurt it. It's only going to react when there's what? H pluses around. And two H pluses, carbonate's going to become H2CO3, eventually breaks apart into CO2 in water. Very important reaction that happens in our blood. We talked about this. We talked about CO2 being a what? A Lewis acid added to water. It makes this. Okay, and that can give off a what? An H plus and make the bicarbonate, HCO3 negative. So we've, we've talked about these reactions. Bottom line is, okay, it's a weak base and we're gonna need a strong acid to make it react. We've been through that before. But I love the fact that they have this as a drug fact. So the drug in calcium, the drug is calcium carbonate, which to me is kind of silly because you know, the kids are playing with chalk all the time, you know, but, but they're playing with a drug. Okay, it's crazy. We should stop that. Put, put the drug down. Stop writing. Because <laughs> you don't want kids to start licking, okay, the chalk off the ground that they wrote on. All right? Maybe that's what they do. They, instead of when they try to sell it or something, they just start writing on it like, oh, they're just playing with the chalk. But it's a drug, okay? It's not a drug that needs to be controlled, okay? In any case, that being said, what is this 750? What is this? Whoa, 750. Party people. Okay, what it is, you can see up here, is 750 milligrams. Each tablet has 750 milligrams. Milligrams, not 750 grams. So that's where they get the 750 from. So for me, the, the, uh, the, uh, the labels are silly. Okay, so what's the point of this lab? The main objective of the lab is to see if, in fact, the tablets or the tabs, if you're cool, you don't say tablets, you say tabs, if each tablet has 0 0.750 grams of calcium carbonate, we are going to be act as quality control chemists to verify if this label, okay, is in fact accurate, telling you. And I will tell you right now, Tums, the company that makes the Tums, I don't know what that company is anymore, they get bought and sold, but the company that makes the Tums, if every tablet was 750 milligrams, this would be probably twice or three times as expensive. I'm sure that on the average, okay, and how many tablets do you need to get that average? Well, we don't know, but on the average, they're about 750 milligrams or 0.750 grams, okay? So we're gonna have a lot of fluctuation, and I will say this, the values that we get in lab will reflect exactly what you have. And I know we're in high school and we're dealing with, okay, equipment that may not be uh, all that advanced and sometimes, but titrations, if you make your concentrations accurate enough and careful enough, and you do this lab, you'll find to the plus or minus each milligram. So you'll be, it'll be interesting to see what numbers you guys get. And they won't all be 750 there'll be a lot of fluctuation because they just don't spend the money to make sure every tablet is 750. Why not? Because it's chalk, man. Nobody cares. They call it a drug, but it's just calcium carbonate, which by the way, if you don't already know, the cycle of bicarb going to CO2, hey, it's how seashells, marine animals, they take the calcium from the water and the carbonate from the water, the carbonate in the water, CO2 hits the water, makes this, produces this, this hits a hydroxide, takes off one H, and makes a carbonate ion. And seashells have a way of grabbing the calcium ions from the water and the carbonate, make a precipitate to make their seashells. Seashells are chalk. All right, so if you want to talk about another drug, people are sucking on seashells all the time. <laughs> all right, and that would, if you could, uh, if you, it would do the same thing. Okay, so seashells are an important part. Also, Calcium carbonate is also limestone, meaning it's a, um, it's a rock that develops in waterways, and that's where fossils are, are made too. So all this is important in our carbon cycle of the earth, all right? All right, any case. Uh, so we're going to neutralize calcium carbonate 
which is a weak base with a strong acid, to figure out exactly how many grams per tablet. All right, so let's get started. We gotta design this. I know I did this last week, we're gonna do it again because you need, you're gonna have a, a couple different ways you're gonna have to write this in terms of how you present this. The first part is a procedure of design. So we need to be able to design, okay, our lab. Because I'm not gonna give it to you as something you follow. I want you to understand how I'm going to design this, okay? So and the reason for this is because you're gonna design the next lab on yourself. Now I sent to you uh, the chalk, the calcium carbonate. That, my friends, is a weak base. It's not a drug as per se. It's the active ingredients in Tums. It's not really active until it hits the strong acid, okay? When we do the next titration in class, we're gonna find how much aspirin is in bear. Now that aspirin is something that we wanna make sure if you're making it bare that you're making exactly what you say you do on your label because doctors wanna prescribe aspirin to certain patients and they wanna know exactly how many milligrams. You're gonna find in that titration, you should get exactly what the label says. Here, because Tums is made of chalk and they don't put a lot of effort, we're gonna expect a lot of variation in the tablets here. So, we're gonna to have to figure out exactly how we have to titrate this in this quality control lab. So we're gonna take two tabs. And remember, one of your procedures is the design, okay? So two tabs, and what do we know? Each tab is um, 0 0.750 grams. Now this is supposedly, so I'm trying to design what chemicals I need, supposedly, and then I'm gonna show you how I, we figure out. We're gonna times this by two, so this is gonna give me uh, uh, 1.50 grams of calcium carbonate. I'm gonna rewrite this here. Okay, now it's a weak base. So I need to figure out how much acid do I need to neutralize it? So we'll do this stoichiometry that we've been doing. Okay, first off, I gotta go to moles. And if you've been to the molecular mass party, where we do what? MRIs, molecular or formula masses, calcium carbonate's a fun one. Calcium carbonate, when you add up all its atomic masses, comes out to be 100. I guess you guys didn't go to that party. Okay, it's okay. And when your grams go bye-bye, we got moles of calcium carbonate. Great, I got how many calcium carbonates. Well, I'm going to do a little ratio here to make some sense for me. You may not need to do this, but one calcium carbonate produces one carbonate ion. It's the carbonate negative two that really, really is the star here in, neutraliz in neutralizing. Calcium will, okay, will be spectating once we drive it off in an acidic environment. Okay, now, what do we know? For one carbonate ion, there are two H pluses. That's important there. Okay. And so calcium carbonate goes bye-bye carbonate. And so what we're going to get is moles of H pluses. And we do the math. 1.50 divided by 100 and then times by zero, we should get 0 0.03 three moles of H plus. Now, that is exactly the moles of H plus I would need if in fact exactly each tab, not saying tablet because I'm, I'm cool, it was 750, all right? So party people, we have to add. So I'm gonna draw this blue arrow down and this would represent the amount of CO3 negative 2 that I would need to neutralize. Now, I would need 0.03 moles of H plus if both tablets were 750 milligrams. But we don't know if they are, so we're gonna have to have some wiggle room. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add excess acid. All right, I'm gonna add excess acid. The question is, how much excess acid? All right, 
I know 0.03 would get me here if the tablets were perfectly or were, were exactly what they say they were. They could be more, they could be less. So I'm going to add, and here's an arbitrary amount, I'm going to add 0 0.04 moles of H+. And by the way, we're going to use a strong acid, HCl. Why? Because we have a weak base. So this, my friends, is an arbitrary amount. I decided 0.04. I could have decided 0.05. Okay, it's an arbitrary amount. When you design your next lab by yourself, you're gonna pick these arbitrary amounts. All right, so what are we gonna have here? Okay, well, we have this mortar and pestle. We're gonna have our two tablets. And we're going to crush them into a powder. So we're going to crush them into a powder. I'm going to pour that powder into a beaker. We'll add some water. It's not important how much because it's about the moles of ions. Okay. Now understand, each tablet the tab is not made of just calcium carbonate, the chalk. It's made of a binder that keeps everything together. That could be of cellulose, a starch. It's made of um, a flavor, because you don't want to just suck on chalk, it's kind of nasty. And of course it has a color, because you can't have a flavor without a color, a color I guess. And there could be other, other components, okay, contributing to any of the three things. And of course you have the calcium carbonate, the active ingredient, the chalk. So what you have is you have this calcium chalk um, precipitate mixed in the tablet. So that's hiding. By adding excess moles of H plus party people, what I'm doing is making sure that by adding more than enough I'm making sure that there was more calcium uh, carbonate than expected. I can, what, neutralize it. But I'm also, by adding excess, this is excess, excess hydrochloric acid, I'm going to drive the reaction to completion. And if there's any calcium carbonate missing or hiding as it's bound to these things, I crush into a powder, the excess H plus will find it. So the, that's important you understand using Le Chatelier's principle, right? Because we have calcium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid. And by having excess amount of this, we're gonna drive it to completion, which is CO2 and water. You should be seeing fizzing. Okay, yes, there'll be some calcium ions and chloride ions, uh, all right? So I guess we write calcium chloride, not balancing here. This is not net ion, but we're gonna drive this reaction forward and the CO2 is gonna live, and you're gonna see fizzing. And you know when the fizzing stop, we have driven the reaction. And by crushing the tabs, adding the excess, we're finding every single carbonate, okay? All right, so how do I add 0.04 moles to my solution? Because now I've crushed the tablets, I added some water, it's not dissolving, okay? How do I know I've added 0.04? Well, I have to decide what kind of solution I have to make. So if I want 0.04 moles of acid, H plus, here's another arbitrary amount. How much solution do we want to add? I think 100 milliliters is a good amount. Again, another arbitrary amount, 0 0.100 liters. And I'm gonna write, it. this is an arbitrary amount that I decided we could have picked less or more. And look, what's the molarity? What's the concentration? Well, 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.01 gives me a what? 0.4 molar HCl solution. We have just decided to drop 100 milliliters of 0.4 molar HCl because that will deliver 0.04 moles of H+. You see how I'm designing this. But I'm overshooting the equivalence point. The question is, it's not going to be right here. This 
is about where the equivalence point. It could be anywhere. We could have tabs that have under the carbohydrate, under the calcium carbonate as posted or more. So what we're gonna have to do, because we needed excess to drive the reaction to completion, Le Chatelier's principle, or find the extra, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a back titration. We're gonna titrate the extra, the extra H pluses. This is the extra H pluses. Now my friends, we can't assume it's gonna be 750 what? Milligrams. It's gonna be somewhere in here, okay? So we know that this arrow that we need to get to is we have to know that there's a wiggle room here. So that's why we have to titrate. Now, what we're gonna do here now is figure out what concentration of hydroxide do I need? So let's go back. We take our two tablets, okay? We crush them. We put them in a beaker. We're gonna add some water. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a mess. It's not gonna be anything that's gonna be clear. It's gonna be cloudy. Most of these things are inside, okay? We're gonna drop 100 milliliters of a 0.4 molar acid solution. Okay, be careful with that. It's gonna fizz. When the fizzing stops, we know that we've driven off the CO2. But we're gonna be left with an acidic solution because we added excess. How much excess? That depends upon how much calcium carbonate was in the taps. Okay, so how do I decide what solution do I titrate this mess by? Well, here's what I do know. The target, the target, doesn't mean it's gonna be that, but the, but the target that I'm going for is that if I added 0.04, didn't I add 0.01? one moles of H plus, that was extra. So the target back is 0.01 moles. I don't think it's gonna be that, but I have to deliver that just to get to this area. I may need more or less. So I'm gonna need 0.04 moles of hydroxides because my excess was 0.01. Again, target, doesn't mean it's gonna be exact. All right, now, I wanna deliver 0.01 moles. Well, here comes an arbitrary value. I'm gonna put the base in a beaker, I'm sorry, in a, um, uh, in a dropping device, in a burette. How much do I wanna spill in the burette? Well, the burettes are 50 milliliters. I don't wanna design this where I have to, I need 100 milliliters of it. So I wanna be somewhere in the middle of the burette. So if I need more or less, depending upon what the tabs actually are, that I do it in one fill up. So I think 20 milliliters is a good number. So when I think about this, I'm deciding 0 0.020 liters. That's an arbitrary amount. I'm designing this titration so that, hey, about half of the burette will be needed or less. I've got room, wiggle room here, my burette. Will I need all 50? Probably not. Will I need less than 20? Maybe. Depends where we are here. So what is this? 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.02 tells me that the solution that I should back titrate should be 0 0.5 molar. Okay? And depending upon the volume of base that I need will give me the moles of base. That's equal to the moles of the excess. I will subtract from the 0.04. I will get the moles okay, of the H plus needed to neutralize, divide by two, I've got my moles of calcium carbonate, convert to grams, divide by a thousand, and I've got my milligrams, one divided by two, because it's two tablets. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. It's called a back titration. We're adding excess acid, and we're gonna add more there, okay? And that's the first part. We're gonna stop here. Okay, so, we're ready to titrate. And remember, you guys are writing a procedure of how you do the lab. You're doing a procedure, of course, to design the lab. Okay, there's a design portion. But, so we know our concentrations that we need to add excess acid, and we figure it out our concentration um, of the base to do the back titration. Okay, now, there's an issue with the strong base. Okay, the strong base here Okay, obviously this, the accuracy of this lab depends upon making 
um, very, very accurate concentrations. The whole lab is based upon knowing exactly how many moles of H pluses are needed that we're going to subtract by the back titration. So these two concentrations have to be known and have to be, and have to be made very well. I made them. Okay, I've already made those two concentrations. The problem is with a strong base like this, NaOH, we're going to use NaOH. There's an issue with NaOH. So I'm going to explain that. Okay, and here's the issue with NaOH. The issue with NaOH is this fact, is that when you have a NaOH solution, okay, and there's two things. Solid NaOH, okay, is what I used to make the solution, okay? To make a 0.5 molar solution, and I wanted to make one liter of it because I know we have a lot of classes. So I want to make a one liter solution. I want to make a 0.5 molar solution. You can see that I needed 0.5 moles of sodium hydroxide. And since sodium hydroxide, which is the strong base we're using, has a formula mass of 40.00 grams per mole, okay, I needed 20 grams of it. I needed 20 grams of it dissolved in a liter to make that solution. That's what I did this morning. There's a problem with solid sodium hydroxide, okay? What's in the air that's acidic that we've learned? Isn't there CO2 in the air? CO2 is in the air. And when it hits the crystal of sodium hydroxide, this is an acid, a Lewis acid. This part of the crystal is a base. Okay, so there's going to be an acid-base reaction. And what we're going to wind up making is sodium carbonate. I'll just simplify that. All right. So, and of course, you're going to make water, okay? So this essentially is going to react with the acid in the air, which is the CO2 part, okay? And so you're going to have, because it's so gosh darn reactive, strong bases, they're going to react in the air. So whatever I measured, which was what? divide by two, 20 grams of it to have half a mole. There's no way that I had exactly what I measured. I'm gonna be under. So the problem is anytime I deal with a strong base solution, I gotta verify it before we use it. It's called standardizing. So I, even though I carefully measured and made a solution, I know that this thing is reactive. It's reactive in the air. It's also deliquescent, meaning it absorbs water. Okay, when I have a and I'll show you this next time. If I have sodium hydroxide sitting in a pellet, it'll, it'll dissolve itself. It absorbs water. Okay, it's called deliquescent. So because it's reactivity and it's deliquescent, okay, there's two issues. Number one, the fact that this is 0.5 moles, molar concentration, I cannot be sure of it, its value, until I standardize it. I'm sure that I'm under by a little bit. And since entire lab is based upon the accuracy of these concentrations, I have to standardize. Standard. Standardize my strong base. You heard about the titrant usually is standardized to know exactly what it is. I don't have this issue with the H pluses. As long as I keep the solution uh, closed, H pluses are gases. Okay, so what am I going to do to standardize this? Okay, because of the issue of it either dissolving, it absorbing water, which makes it heavier than it actually is, right? Because some of this could be water weight, which would lower the concentration of the actual hydroxides. Or it reacting with the CO2 in the water to make carbonates, which means it doesn't have its hydroxides anymore, which means it has less base than I'm expecting to have. Okay, so what am I going to do to standardize? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a weak acid to it. So I'm gonna take my sodium hydroxide solution, okay, and I'm basically gonna titrate it with something called KHP, okay? KHP is potassium hydrogen phthalate. We dealt with this in lab 12, okay? And the thing about potassium hydrogen phthalate 
is that it is a solid at room temperature. It is non-reactive. Because it's non-reactive, whatever that we measure, it's a weak acid, right? It's a weak acid. Whatever we measure is what's gonna be. It doesn't react, the shelf life is forever. It doesn't react with the air, it doesn't absorb water, it doesn't break down, okay? So because of that, we're gonna use KHP to do what? To titrate our strong base, which of course is a hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, to verify what its value is, okay? And so that's what we're gonna do. First step is to standardize. Now the question is, why is KHP so good to standardize? Well, number one, it's a weak acid, so we don't need a strong acid to do this titration strong base. It's a solid, it's non-reactive, and there's a reason why it's so great to work with. The fact that it's a solid, not a liquid, if I'm measuring liquids like I have to do for these two concentrations, okay, I have to make sure that I fill the volume up to a certain line, I have to wash out my um, pre-mixing containers to get every volume. I don't have those issues. All I gotta do is measure. I don't care about the volume, all right? It doesn't react in the air. And here's the biggest one. It's got a molecular mass of 204 grams per mole. That's huge. So if I'm off in my mass a little bit, it's not gonna make a huge change in my moles because of that large um, mass. So let's design our titration with KHP. Let's design it. Okay. All right. So let's say that we want to add 20 milliliters. We want to drop 20 milliliters of the base. Okay. That's our target. Remember, we're dealing with targets because we don't know exactly. So I'm going to produce, I'm going to say uh, 0.02 liters is used, okay? And because it's 0.05, it's kind of silly math right here, liters times the what? Molarity, of course, is gonna give me my 0.01 moles. So I wanna produce, obviously drop 0.01 moles of hydroxide. I know I got it from top here, but I'm showing you how you would have done it normally. And I'm thinking about doing what? Using 20 milliliters, drop 20 milliliters about. And I'll add more to it, okay? Okay, now, if that's 0.01 moles of OH, hello, that's gotta equal to be 0.01 moles of KHP. All I need is 0.01 moles of KHP mixed in some beaker. That's it. How do I do that? Well, if it's 204 grams per mole, what's a tenth of 204? 20.4, right? What's a hundredth of 204? Right. So all you need to do is measure 2.04 grams of KHP. KHP. Put that into a beaker. I don't know. We'll add 100 milliliters of water. The water doesn't matter because it's all about the what? Moles. I'll give you some arbitrary, we'll just pour some water in there. We'll use distilled water. No other ions. It's going to dissolve because it's got a what? A group one ion. We'll add some phenolphthalein. And we will titrate without a pH probe. And we'll just stop it once it gets to that slight pink. And then we'll solve, knowing the volume of base we have to add, we'll figure out, okay, knowing, knowing what? That this is 0.01 moles, definitely, okay? And knowing what? Exactly how many milliliters, we'll figure out if in fact this, this is a what? Question mark, we'll figure out if it's 0.05. My guess? You only need a little bit more than 20. My guess that this is a little bit lower because it reacts. Okay, 
So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to do, we're going to first standardize our base. Then we're going to crush the tabs, drop acid, and back titrate. And we probably can do that in half an hour with my help. Okay. For those that are home, you can start the homework.